It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. I'm also one of the CFPs on the program. With me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Well, when you start drawing money from your retirement accounts, there are good ways to do it and not so good ways to do it. So today we're going to be sharing the mistakes that some people make when they're drawing money from their retirement accounts. We'll cover that and more on this hour of the Wise Money Show. Josh, I need your help this morning. Okay. We're finding uh, our friend Kevin Corhorn is under-caffeinated. Yes. He entered the studio under-caffeinated. So, Josh, I need us to covet together and draw some energy out of this man. Because <laughs> yes. talking about finances is boring, but if, <laughs> we, if we can bring the energy, yeah. Kevin? We need some energy. All right. Yep. Okay. Hey, if you have a question for us, and we're going to hit questions in, in the last segment of the program today, uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574 222 2000 online wisemoneyshow.com and then all over social media wherever you're at we are there as well search the wise money show leave comments and questions there okay so you spent your entire working career building up this financial mountain okay and saving up accumulating dollars and it's all for a purpose to retire and walk away from that paycheck with confidence and peace and then all of a sudden you start drawing money out of your investments the wrong way and dollars are slipping through your fingers and you've made some mistakes. We want to help you avoid those mistakes today. Now, it's not, as we bring this up, it's not to poke anyone in the eye or make you feel bad. We've all made financial mistakes. In fact, I've made one of these already. Okay. But the point is uh, to try to learn from these mistakes, to avoid repeating them or learn from others' mistakes and avoid them altogether. So we're going to hit the top five worst ways that we've seen or you could draw money out of your retirement account. And the first one is drawing money out of a Roth IRA too early in retirement or too soon. Yeah, I th this one is is um, unfortunately a, a situation that a lot of people slip into because it is tempting to pull money out of a Roth IRA when you, you learn or relearn that that money is tax-free. Yeah. And so especially you get into retirement, you start getting hit with some taxes as you're drawing uh, from these accounts and everything. And you may say, man, I, I just need a year of reprieve. I've, I've had that question a lot from yeah. clients where should we just be drawing off this Roth IRA so that we don't get hit with as many taxes? And my answer is always, no, you want to wait as long as you can on the Roth IRA because the real power comes from giving it as much time as possible to grow because all that growth is accumulating tax-free for you. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the real power is just letting that continue to compound outside the reach of Uncle Sam or your state's uh, income taxes and, um, and hopefully postponing as long as possible the day when you have to start or you choose to start drawing off of that to cover your needs and everything. I, I see it a lot where clients have taken uh, more than what they originally wanted to out of their retirement accounts in a given year, and then they need a little bit more. And it's it's almost like a, well, I'm paying so much tax. Shouldn't we just draw from the Roth? And emotionally, I agree. Like, yeah, that, that makes sense. And yet what you mentioned, Josh, uh, you with the Roth, the way it works and that the growth is tax free, Typically, those are the last dollars you want to draw from. You want to give those as much time as possible to grow tax-free. Kevin, what else would you add? Yeah, you, well, you're right, Mike. Once the money is out, it's you know, once the feathers are out of the pillow, you you're not really mm -hmm. putting them back in there. So, um, I I think that this mistake, if you said because I think you could look for a theme or like what's the root mistake here? I mean, the root mistake would be not having a distribution strategy. Because when, as we work with folks to plan for retirement, what we want to encourage them to do is have diversification in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways we want them to have diversification is in the different types of accounts that they're saving money into. And the Roth IRA, which, which we love, uh, is like the 24 karat gold Cadillac because I'm taking after-tax money, getting it growing tax-free forever. And as long as I have earned income, 
I can fund some sort of IRA. Um, I, I, there's a phase out where I could make too much money and I can't uh, go in the front door of the Roth IRA. But I, I think, um, because to me, I've seen people before they hit retirement t- just draw the basis out of their Roth IRA. It's a tool. Yeah. So is it is that a huge mistake? And so if you're listening to this and saying, oh, I, uh, boy, now I am terrified of making a mistake. Don't be afraid of making a mistake yeah. at all. Um, be afraid of not having a plan. That's yeah. as a as a financial planner. Uh, that's the that's our one note samba. I mean, that's that's the tune we're going to play every single time we talk about finances. And and don't be afraid to talk to a CFP after you've made a mistake. Right. Right. Because the, because then it's still appropriate to have a game plan and look through your distribution options to create that strategy that Kevin's yes. talking about down here in, in the notes as I, as I wanted to lay out this this mistake. I also then said, OK, well, so what are some alternatives? And and it would be it'd be coming up with a distribution plan that fits within your entire financial plan. Typically, guys, we would tell you you would want to draw from non retirement accounts first, Mm -hmm. then pre-tax, then Roth. But that's not a script that everyone should be following. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got HSA dollars or depending on your tax situation, you might want to flip that in some ways or make some adjustments, some customization from time to time. That's why you need to be working with the CFP that's doing comprehensive financial planning. Yeah, there are some times when If we're talking about potential mistakes, it may be a mistake to not draw money out of a Roth IRA. If your income is creeping closer and closer towards some key thresholds within your tax picture, where maybe a little bit more money out of that IRA that we said you ought to be drawing from uh, would trigger you to start um, paying more money to uh, the Medicare system for your Part B premiums uh, two years out maybe you'd be better off drawing off of that Roth IRA. Or even there are times when we would say, Borrowing money uh, in, in retirement could be a better strategy temporarily. I, so, so here's the mistake, and I, I want to move us on, but when Cindy and I were first married, we were having our first child. I, I've shared this before, but, but in a panic, we found out that she didn't have maternity coverage on her health insurance. We thought she had group. She was told she had group health insurance. She did not. Her company just set her up with an individual policy, and for a 21-year-old female who was married, didn't add maternity coverage to it for whatever reason. And so we panicked. We started getting bills, and we panicked, and I pulled basis out of the Roth. Looking back on it, should have borrowed money or, or something, right? I mean, this was early in our career, so it didn't have all the emergency funds built up and everything, and pulled some basis out of the Roth. Looking back on that, I should have borrowed money. And I didn't. So that that's a mistake. And so, so yeah, work with your CFP, get a plan together. Now, what's the second mistake? Second worst mistake with drawing money out in, re- in retirement is, and we see this a lot, it's drawing more than what you actually need out of your IRA, okay, or from your retirement accounts. Now, here's how that works. You're working and then you transition and you, you leave your paycheck behind, you transition into retirement. And you're not fully sure exactly how much money you're going to need. So you start drawing a certain amount out of your IRA. But over time, it's just building up in the checking account for no real purpose. You're not saving up for anything in particular. It's just building up. You're taking more out and you're paying more tax. Mm -hmm. Uh, A circumstance that we often will see this is when uh, people reach age 72 and they have to start drawing required minimum distributions out of their retirement accounts. And yet they don't really need it. You know, maybe they've built up these big IRAs and the government is forcing them to take big distributions that they don't really need. And sometimes their default is just, well, throw it in the bank. You know, we don't, yeah. we don't really need it. And what a lot of people don't realize is, yes, it has to come out of the IRA. It doesn't have to leave investments entirely, though. It could be reinvested into just a joint account or some taxable investments and allow it to keep on growing. Yeah, I, we have to dive a little bit deeper into this because we've seen this circumstance happen a lot. What are some alternatives to get around it? Plus there's three other major mistakes people make when they withdraw money from their retirement account. So that and more coming up on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is The Wise Money Show. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, also on 
podcast at the same time, also on a few local radio stations at the same time as well, which is why the content is as long as it is. If you're looking for something a little more direct and a little more concise, we have Next Wise Step videos that air on this channel all throughout the work week, taking one financial concept, applying it directly to your financial life. Secure Act 2.0, bam. Inverted yield curve, bam. Should you contribute to an HSA, bam. Should you withdraw money from your Roth, bam. Those sorts of concepts. So if you are all about learning about those things so that you can take your next wise step, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you're made aware every time we drop new content. And if you like the content, like the content, leave comments as well. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to at least get that one started. Yeah. To keep us sort of on, on track here. Mike, is there something in your shirt? Like collar up here? Oh, these are, this is, is it a button? it's a button. Yeah, no, these actually. So these shirts are really lightweight, but there's never a perfect shirt. They are lightweight and everything, but if I could change something, I would take these buttons out. I'm never going to use it. But then, yes, they flare out, and I've got this extra. I don't know. You come here for, you know, the financial advice, not the fashion tip. <laughs> but yes. Definitely not. <laughs> don't. don't uh, fashion. Don't be. Are we going to cut that part out? No. Or can we keep? Go can we do it? Sure. Okay. So I, I just, just for the fun of it, I was, I was looking at what to do with your RMD because Josh was talking about that. Um, and one option is to convert it to a Roth IRA. You've got to be kidding! Wow. I'm not kidding you. YouTube What's audience the source. Well, you probably shouldn't say. Uh, Don't want to bad mouth somebody, but yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube audio. So, so you're but. saying the internet has misinformation out there? It is spectacular. I, I, I that's blatant. I mean, that yeah. just that's not even close. So anyway, wow. Uh, maybe you can <clears throat> share that on the air or whatever. Let's well, pick this one back up and then. Yeah, keep because it going. I, to me, it's it's interesting to think um, if we're if we're bringing the creativity, right? If we're if we're bringing it, what what is the creativity? with what, what do I do? I, I'm, I'm okay as far as my income goes and lifestyle and everything else, but I have to take this money. And so um, I just kind of was noodling with the client the other day and made a list. Yeah. So no, let's not, let's I'm, not I'm park on that one. Share, share the list. If we can share it concisely. Yeah. It's probably just one segment. <laughs> <laughs> or we could make it into a show. It's well, up to you. I don't, I don't know. I can share them okay. and then uh, tease people. <laughs> uh, to say stay tuned next week here we go C coming soon to a really cool speaker near you uh it is uh all right here we go what are the worst ways to draw money out of your retirement accounts we're hitting the top five right now to help you avoid these mistakes or recover from them if you've made them yourselves this is the wise money show with corhorn financial group thanks for being here my name is mike bernard with me in the kfg studios kevin corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast, wherever you listen, go check it out. Search the Wise Money Show and uh, subscribe to it there, but then also rate the program as well. We appreciate that. Okay, so we're, we're hitting the top five worst ways or mistakes that people make when they draw money out from their retirement accounts. First is drawing money out of your Roth IRA too early. Those are typically the last dollars you want to draw from. The second one is sort of putting that on autopilot and drawing out more than you actually need. And when that happens, you're adding more taxable income to your tax return and you're giving up some tax sheltering. Now, I, where I, we, I mean, you should be building a plan with your CFP so that you've got a comfortable amount of cash flow coming in throughout retirement so you're not worrying about money, okay? However, there's a, 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 a pastor, a wise individual, Andy Stanley, talked about a long time, did a series about um, money managing money. And he said, in retirement, drawing money out is sort of like uh, balancing a broomstick on the palm of your hand. It, those of you that grew up in the 80s or really bored with <laughs> before electronics. And you're always <laughs> making these slight adjustments trying to keep that broomstick um, in the air. And same thing with cash flow. And the mistake is if you're just, it's just sloshing around. You've got way more money coming in than you're going to spend. And you, the, the checking account just starts building up. I'm all for building it up to spend it and and take a big trip or something intentional. But, but no, we're talking about just building it up with no real purpose. 
you're paying more tax and you're you're taking money out of tax sheltered accounts when you don't need to. Kevin, real quick, I mean, Josh also brought up, well, sometimes we see the mistake of people taking their RMD and if they don't need it, just throwing it in a checking account instead of reinvesting it. What are a couple things you could do with your RMD? Yeah, it's at 72. You have to take your required minimum they're distribution. They're talking about moving that to 75 they're- 10 years from now, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, don't go anywhere. Oh, man. It, but you can start your qualified charitable distributions at 70 and a half. You want to know that. But what would you do? And and I was working with a client uh, the other day, and he turned 72 this year. And he's like, well, what should I do with it? And what I said was, well, for sure, don't just start taking that on a monthly basis and let it pile up in your savings account. Uh, because if you do, Joshua Gregory will use you as an example on a radio show <laughs> or YouTube. So what he said, well, what what could I do? And I said, well, um, you could use that money to do a qualified charitable distribution. Send part. If you had a fifty thousand dollar required minimum distribution, you could send whatever you're going to do charitably directly from your IRA to that charity. And the great thing about that is, not only do you not pay federal, you don't pay state tax on that. It's a beautiful thing. So you could do your qualified charitable distribution, you could pay your taxes with it. So you could do your full tax withholding and not have to worry about paying estimates. You could, you you could, if you owed 25 to the fed and 25 to the state, withhold that money. Um, You could take that money and put it in an other investment account. Yep. Just a a non-qualified. You could take that money out and live on it, like we said, but make sure you need it uh, to live on. Because if you don't, you might want to consider some of these other options. You could give some of it away. Yeah, you could gift you, it. You could do five you could you could fund a 529 for children or grandchildren. You could fund Roth IRAs for children or grandchildren. There's all kinds of cool fun creative things to do if you don't need the money. Now if you need the money, don't do that. Yeah. Right? But um and then one thing which I I put on the list, it doesn't apply to most people, but you could get more aggressive about reducing debt if you're if you chose to enter retirement with debt. You, uh, during the break, you were searching online and doing some research, and one of the articles oh, said man. you could do a Roth conversion with RMD that you don't need. And is that true? That is that is fake news. False. Wildly right. untrue. And yet it's yeah. out there on the internet web, so got to be careful. <laughs> All right. And that's a good segue. The third biggest mistake that we see people make when they're drawing money out of retirement is missing a required minimum distribution. And if I were to be more specific, it's not missing one from your IRA because the rules around the IRA, and we'll explain them here, are pretty simple. It's missing an RMD on an old retirement account at an employer, a 401k or 403b, because those rules are different. They are uh, different in the sense that you have to draw out of Uh, each of those types of retirement plans separate from your IRA. You you don't get to just draw a little extra out of your IRA to cover over those other accounts. The the government actually kind of segments these out into different buckets, if you will. Now, the way I understand the rules, they allow you to group all 401ks together, but they don't allow you to group all 403Bs together. So in 403Bs, it's typical because there hasn't been the same sort of Oh, uh, bureaucracy <laughs> applied to 403Bs as there's been with 401Ks. So a lot of schools, if, you're, if you've are if you been in the public school system for a while, it's likely you've got three or four 403Bs because you've got a little 403B annuity that someone sold you a while back. You've got a 403B something at your first school and then a 403B at your current school or maybe two. And if you don't clean all those up, you're going to need to take a required minimum distribution from each and every one of them. And I, well, guys, we've seen it. You will lose track. You'll forget. You'll miss one. Yeah, this is just another reason why often the default for many people is when they retire, they consolidate their retirement accounts mm-hmm. into an IRA. It's not just because you have the whole world to choose from as far as investment options and you have more control over the tax planning that you can do and when you take those distributions. But yeah, when you get into RMD situation, if you have multiple types of retirement accounts beyond just an IRA, your life is going to be more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's an easy example is folks in town who, if you work at Notre Dame, that might not be the first uh, college you ever worked at. And you might have a TIA craft and a Fidelity 403B. That's right. right. Yeah. And, and so, and if you're working there, 
you don't have to take the required minimum distribution. So even if you're of the age, but if you're not, and this is this is where I've seen um, a, a, a great example was someone who had after tax money in their raw in their four hundred one k. They were taking a required minimum distribution out of that. Well, that's that's fine. You don't have to pay taxes on that portion. But a better solution would be roll that money out and split it between a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA, mm-hmm. and then don't ever take a requirement distribution on that Roth portion. Right. The Roth 401k. Do you need to take an RMD from a Roth 401k? Yeah. Not from a Roth IRA. So, it, it, guys, these rules are crazy. And yes, typically the default solution, yes, you're going to have more investment choices, but overall you're going to want simplicity. You are going yes. to want simplicity. Yes. There is value to that. And so it's it typically is wise to clean up these old retirement accounts, have them in an IRA or Roth IRA. Yeah. All right. The fourth worst way or big mistake that, that people can make when they're drawing money from retirement accounts is doing so, making a withdrawal such that you're subject to the 10% early withdrawal penalty. Now, so Kevin, maybe I, I, when does this 10% early withdrawal penalty apply? Well, it applies if if you are before age fifty nine and a half. Yeah, and there are some exceptions to this, so it's it's not uh, you know this it, all of all of finance is rules and exceptions. <laughs> so if you're a reasonably intelligent person and you say, well, let me apply logic, nope, throw it out the window. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So there are ways if you basically if you're if you're before fifty nine and a half, if you take it, if you retire. In, in the year which you turn 55 from your employer and you take money out of the 401k and the plan document states that you can do it, then you can yeah, do that without, avoid, pe- yeah, yeah, do that without penalty. penalty. And, and with an IRA, if you turn it on its side and take it out over time, five years or until 59 and a half, whichever is longer, you can also avoid that. Substantially equal periodic payments, it's a different type of SEPP IRA or, or SEP IRA. We're going to hit that. And plus, we've got more mistakes with withdrawing dollars out of retirement accounts that we want to help you avoid that more. Coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. I noticed that uh, I get into my talking finance voice. And <laughs> Do you use and, that with your kids? And then, and only when they're in trouble. <laughs> and then I've got to close the segment. And so I, my voice goes up really quick, and I try to, <laughs> try to add a little energy. I should be bringing that energy throughout You're excited the... excited to leave the segment? I don't know. Is I'm just, I'm just like, oh, I need to end on a high note, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, that's funny. Okay. We'll pick that one back up. And then the last one. And then if there's any other honorable mentions, we're going into third segment, so we can spend the whole segment on this. So... All right. I mean, that might be a good show. How to draw dollars from your retirement account before 59 and a half and avoid the 10% penalty. Can you fit all that in the thumbnail? 72T (laughs) exceptions and everything? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. All right. Let's do it. Are we going back to that one again? Yeah, we'll hit it real quick. Clean it up. Lance uh, gave an example yesterday that someone was drawing money out of an IRA to fund a house purchase, house transition, and he helped them. And so, I mean, those are practical examples. It's not just early retirement. It's just at any time drawing money out where you'd have to pay the 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can share that example. What are the worst ways or the biggest mistakes people make when they're drawing money out of retirement accounts We're sharing those with you so that you can avoid making those mistakes, keep more dollars in your pocket, more dollars growing for your financial future. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard with me in the KFT studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. I'm staring into the camera right now. Go check it out. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show and subscribe to it there and turn on notifications so you're made aware every time we drop new content which we drop a lot of content there all throughout the week so search the wise money show on youtube follow us there okay the fourth mistake that we see people make when they're drawing money out of retirement accounts is 
is doing so in such a way that they're subject to the 10% early withdrawal penalty. So that is that is drawing money out of pre-tax retirement accounts, or really even Roth, actually, um, before mm-hmm. the age of 59 and a half without having any exceptions. Now we're talking at the break, maybe we should do a full show on, hey, what are those exceptions? Um, but any additional thoughts or comments there, Josh, Kevin? I, I don't know. I would just observe uh, the, the times throughout my career that I've seen this happen, heard stories of folks who actually do take a, a big chunk of money out of a retirement account, and maybe they don't even realize that they're going to be subject to a 10% penalty on top of the tax exposure that normally would have applied. Um, it, it does seem like, yeah, there's maybe a group of people that don't realize that that's how it works. Mm -hmm. And then there's another group of people who they just feel like they don't have another option. You know, they're, they're maybe desperate to get their hands on some cash. Um, maybe they're going through some major financial transition and this is one of the only sources of liquidity that their mind went to. And, uh, to, to me, this is one of the reasons why you have a certified financial planner in your life. It's someone who can bring creativity to your situation and help you identify, well, what are your other options? You know, you might feel like you've you've been kind of backed into a corner and this is just the only way out, but there may be other ways that you could get that need met or postpone some some of the tax paying, that sort of thing. And certainly exposure to a 10% penalty, boy, we, we want you to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. And uh, that's where your certified financial planner can uh, be worth their weight in gold. And it's not just when you're trying to draw dollars out from retirement early in retirement, or if you retired before age 59 and a half, we were hearing from one of our all-star CFPs, Lance Ludwig, earlier this week of an example where someone had, you know, bought a house before they sold their house, which is common right now in this housing market, and void of a plan or working with Lance and a CFP, their solution was, I'll just draw a bunch of money out of my IRA. And, you know, I, I guess that's my only option. And thankfully, they met with Lance before this was all done and within the window when this could be corrected. And and they did. He did. Avoided a bunch of tax, avoided a bunch of penalty. And he was quantifying somewhere close to ten grand in tax savings there from just that conversation. So That's great. Um, all right. The fifth way, and we're going to add a couple other sort of honorable mention, but the fifth worst way of taking money from your retirement accounts, and this is just this is a huge one, is making a lump sum withdrawal from your retirement accounts without first considering the tax ramifications. Not every lump sum withdrawal from a retirement account is a bad idea. That's that's right. it, oftentimes it's a good idea. But you've got to first look and consider the tax ramifications before you act. Yep. And that may even involve running a an actual tax projection with your certified financial planner and maybe collaborating with your CPA as well. Uh, simply because there may be some unintended consequences to drawing out of that IRA. And and one group that I might talk to would be those who are drawing Social Security and you don't have a lot of other income, so it's possible that maybe you're not even having to count any of your Social Security on your tax return until all of a sudden your, your IRA distributions or your other income cross certain thresholds. And now every additional dollar coming out of that IRA is causing another dollar of Social Security to be taxed. And so all of a sudden, you're you're having almost a double impact on your tax return because of these lump sum distributions. Just to say that again, if you're in a certain window of income and and Social Security income, you could draw an extra, let's say, $5,000 out of your IRA and cause $10,000 worth of income to be taxed. Because now that 5,000 that you pulled out is gonna be taxed, but then five more thousand of your social security is gonna kind of flow over to the taxable line. I mean, it, sometimes it's unavoidable and you just need to plan for it. But if you can plan ahead and avoid that, you're gonna to want to. Yeah, and usually I'm the uh, optimist that needs to get reeled in by you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, I will say that you it can be up to 85 cents of every dollar of social security that yeah. makes it over to the taxable line. So for every dollar I'm pulling out, I'm I'm I've got this little Klingon, this 85 cent Klingon. So I'm paying taxes on a dollar 85 instead of paying taxes on a dollar. I mean, the other circumstances we've already hit them during the discussion here, but you could pull a lump sum withdrawal. Hey, I need 
50 grand to do this, you know, uh, we're renovating the kitchen. We need 50 grand. Okay, well, you actually need 80 then to withhold taxes, blah, blah, blah. And taking 80 out of your IRA is going to push you up into the next IRMA tier where you're going to have to pay more for your Medicare Part B and Part D premiums. It could also push you into the next tax bracket. And if it's moving from the 22% tax bracket to the 24% tax bracket, you might say, eh, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But if it means you're moving from the 24% to the 32, okay, that one hurts, right? Or the 12% to the 22, that one hurts. You're going to want to try to avoid that. And so one of the ways that you can help manage these lump sum withdrawals is, well, I, I mean, the way is to sit down with your CFP and craft out some strategies. And But some of those strategies could be taking a chunk out this year and then a chunk out January 2nd of the next year, right? Yeah. So you, you push it into two tax years. Yeah, I think of a couple of things, Mike. When you talk about the kitchen remodel, I think, okay, well, do I have a home equity on line on my house? And interest rates are seem to be skyrocketing. So I just talked to someone who said their home equity line is now at 5.75%. Wow. This is this is why if you had a chance, I mean there was there were credit unions that were doing like 5-year home equity lines of credit for 2.19%. Wow. So I mean you, so this is where you want to always be watching, always be tending your financial garden and make sure you've got you've you've been doing the right things. And but the other thing cuz we we've we talked about Irma and, and and Medicare but there are lots of folks that have retired before 65 so they're not on Medicare and so you'd be also um, at risk of Inc if you increase your income dramatically, you're giving back your uh, advanced premium tax credit. That's right. And then it shows up as a nasty tax surprise when you file your return. Yeah. So, okay, guys, well, we got a couple minutes left here in this portion of the show. What other mistakes do you see people make drawing dollars out of their retirement accounts? I think uh, one that could have some potential very damaging effects for someone is if you just blindly set up a monthly distribution out of your investments that is not already funded with cash within those investments. So drawing, drawing a monthly stipend or a, a monthly deposit into your bank account from your IRA is not a bad thing. In fact, it's a wonderful way to kind of replicate what you were used to back when you had a paycheck coming in regularly. But the question is, how is that distribution to you actually getting funded? have you already sold out of some of the investments and you have them sitting in safekeeping ready to be direct deposited very diligently every single month? Or are you instead on a monthly basis, do you have something set up where you're actually selling out of investments in little chunks each and every month? And the risk with that is you actually start cannibalizing your portfolio during significant dips because you have to just sell more and more shares in order to harvest that same amount of cash that you are used to. So this reverse dollar cost averaging is the phrase that we use, but it can really be damaging during uh, major dips in the market. Right. I mean, if that happened in January, if you were set up that way, January and February of this year, when there was lots of inflation as well, and you needed to draw up more, that is an enormous problem. All right, we've got questions from fans of the show. We're hitting that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Put that finger down. <laughs> Put that finger down. I'm impressed that you keep your composure so well, Michael. Oh. Well, okay, so say that, but. okay, well, I didn't. I wasn't able to give the the good ones. <laughs> All right, well, we'll start there, Jeez. and then and then uh, fan of the you gotta show. Gotta be aggressive on this show. I guess so. <laughs> fan of the show. Uh, family of KFG, Mr. Jim, sent an email. Uh, he's the second from the bottom question. And I, I'd like to at least try to hit that one. And then we can go either to Daniel or Paul um, or Matthew, First Mark, one. Luke, or John. Jim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> James. Let's work our way through the Gospels. So Jim, um, see. Uh, part of the Nasium clan? No. Okay. No. With a yeah, with a J. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's my joke. All right. My kids Just every day me. when we're if we're able to eat dinner together, they'll tell me what they did in Jim, and I'm like, "Who's Jim? I don't know. <laughs> I know all your friends. <laughs> Who is this guy? All right. Who is Jim? Okay, but so Kevin, we can start if yeah. you if you've got a couple others that you want to quickly share. Sure. I'll, just, I'll share them really quick. Yep. I just shouldn't take more. In. All right. <laughs> 
last segment. <clears throat> Thanks for being with us today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name's Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at. We are there as well. We're not on TikTok. I don't think we'll ever be on TikTok. Maybe someday we'll scrutinize some of the financial stuff that is aired through that medium. Oh, my goodness. Make nope. It we head, won't. Nope. We're, ne we're never going to do that, Mike. All right. I'll, I'll take it. Appreciate okay. the offer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're wrapping up the, the headliner topic today, which was what are the, the five worst ways that people or mistakes people make when they're drawing money out of their retirement accounts? Kevin has a few more honorable mention. Then we're getting into questions. So, Kevin, what else do you have? Yeah, I think um, these would have been, should have been first team, uh, <laughs> uh, not second team, not honorable mention. No, but there's there there are some mistakes as it relates to withdrawing money from your retirement plans. And one of the potential mistakes is I don't have my withholdings correct. So when you take the money out, one thing that you may want to do at the time is do tax withholdings. You don't have to, but you will, if it's a taxable account, you will have to pay taxes at some point in time. So you want to have a plan for doing that. And I would say another mistake that, that you can make is ha is seeking kind of one size fits all advice for how to do either my withholdings or any of the rest of this stuff. I I Googled, uh, you know, worst mistakes you make in withdrawing money from a retirement plan. And the all of the uh, the search results, they were they all went back to the same article on Yahoo. And it wasn't a helpful article. Is that the, okay? I think I saw that article. Yeah, the, it's the it's the five, <laughs> and I'm like all that all that article was doing, and people especially I like to read. I'd rather read the comments than the actual article itself because <laughs> I, it I tickles lose, my I lose faith in humanity. If I just my sense comments. of humorous because you get to see what all the smart people have to say, and but <laughs> but they're like, well, this is just trying to convince people to you know not draw social security until age seventy, and you know that. That's that can be a good strategy. It could be a horrible strategy. And just like taking the basis out of your Roth IRA when you're a youngster, hindsight will prove to you whether it was a great strategy or not. Yeah. Right. So. Right. right. Okay. There's more, but I, I I'll leave we'll leave those on the cutting room floor. <laughs> the big idea is is planning, guys. And there's six areas to your financial life: present financial position, protection planning, tax planning, investment planning retirement planning and estate planning. And when you're drawing money out of retirement or out of your retirement accounts, you've got to look at all six areas of your financial life in order to make the wise choice. I, I'm not kidding. And we could spend the rest of this show and every other show that we do of wise money explaining why that's important. You just would stop listening. But you've got to look at all six of those areas, which is why we're going to preach to you. You need to be working with a CFP and not just any CFP, one that's doing comprehensive financial planning and wants to get into the weeds and build out a distribution strategy with you. All right. Now it's time for uh, questions from fans of the show. And Jim is a frequent listener. He's a friend and, and fan of KFG as well. And I hadn't told Josh and Kevin about this. I actually had to look up the exact reference he was talking about to make sure I was following. I had to, too. And I, I've never heard of it re referred to in this way. And, Jim, I you call me out and say, I, Mike, you made this comment. Now, it's on, it's on record. I think it was Josh. I don't think I'm I don't believe I'm the one that shared I can't wait this to hear rule. This. So here anyway, so here's Jim's question. Uh, he went to the Wise Money Show, sent it by email, wisemoneyshow.com, sent it by email. I'm a frequent listener, enjoy the show. On a recent episode, I think Mike, I think you're wrong, Jim, made a comment about the Indiana CC40 credit. Okay, we'll share what that is. Affecting the federal contributions deduction. I haven't been able to find any instructions on this in the Indiana instructions. Could you clarify the mechanics, please? So here's the thing. There is a, uh, in Indiana, which is where uh, we've got a couple offices, northern Indiana. Also, I have a couple in, in southern Michigan. Um, you can get a a 50% state tax credit when you make a charitable donation to an Indiana college or university. Mm -hmm. And yes, Jim, I remember for the first time ever, I mean, we've talked about this tax credit many times on the show before, but for the first time ever, there was mention that, well, those donations to that 
uh, college or university, don't it, when you're getting that tax credit, you can't use those same donations as a federal deduction. I can't. Remember, who said it? It wasn't me. I don't think it was me. Yeah, I. I think it. I think it was Josh. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm. I'm actually. Uh, I'm. I'm searching the archives right now. Uh, please do. Um, be, but I'd be, like to go back because and watch remember, that. wasn't it tied to the six hundred dollar federal uh, deduction mm-hmm. on on the front page? Yeah, that's so, what we were talking about at the time. I remember that part because I would be, argue because you couldn't. Right. I would argue you could still double dip. I'm not sure how they would even catch you. Okay? That's how it always worked back when we were doing, most people were doing a Schedule A. They were itemizing their deductions. And we would talk all the time about how, man, you, you get this amazing credit on your Indiana tax return. Yeah. Basically 50% of your dollars back up to $200 for a married couple. That's the most you can get back on the return. But then you're also saving money in whatever tax bracket you were in uh, on the federal return. And I, uh, part of the reason I say, I, I don't know that I said that, is I, I remember thinking, oh, really? It's, not, it's yeah. not countable? So I'm saying you can double dip there without, without looking at any proof source. And again, I just sprung this question on you guys. We haven't done any advanced research uh, on this. But I'm saying you can double dip. Josh, you're saying you can. I would have thought you, you could. But Kevin, same. Remember, we were talking about that $600 um, deduction that you're allowed to yeah. take. Just you know, for 2021, you're able to do this, but yep. I don't know. M- most people um, that w- most of the tax returns that we see, if they're doing charitable contributions, often it goes over the $600 anyway. Right. So it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. But. Got it. Got it. All right. Next question comes from Daniel. Hey, wise money guys. I was curious what your thoughts are on investment apps such as Robinhood. Do you recommend them as a way of investing? I'll, I'll kick it off right here. I mean, uh, investing um, should be one component of your entire financial life. It is. It's one of the six areas. And um, I, I, as far as what app or what medium you use, I would just, I would first emphasize your investing and investing strategy needs to fit cohesively within all six areas of your financial life. Now, I do have concerns with Robinhood selling data to other people. I mean, they're one of the first things you learn as a financial advisor is you can't front run. You basically can't take information from your clients and use it for your own benefit or your firm's benefit. Guys, that's what Robin Hood is doing. Yeah. They're, and, sell, they're and selling yet, all the information. And yet they're still around. Mm-hmm. And so that is in, <laughs> insane. If any one individual would do that, they're barred and, and they're not they're no longer able to serve as a financial advisor. So I don't like that. Number two, I think it could be risky to get in with a Robinhood app sort of thing and and start implementing some investment strategies that are inconsistent with the rest of your financial life. Now, if it's just for play money and, hey, I'm working my financial plan with these investments over here, my 401k, my IRA, my Roth, and just I want to play around with something on the side, Personally, I wouldn't use Robinhood simply because of what I already mentioned. I would use something yeah, else. Yeah, I have to find something else to play around with. Because you want to make the distinction between investing and trading. Mm-hmm. So Robinhood is really kind of designed for trading. And the the there are a, a few issues with this. One is there were times when you couldn't trade yeah. certain shares of certain companies on Robinhood. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I would not that that right there would get me out of the thing altogether. What people like is they can put three hundred dollars in Robinhood and buy a a, a, f- a fractional share of Amazon. Mm-hmm. You can buy three hundred dollars worth of Amazon, and they like that. And um, but the the I'm going to just go out on a limb and say people don't really understand what the costs are because the the costs are also baked into the execution of these things. And so you say, all right, well, if Amazon's at $1,800, I bought in. Well, you you might have bought in at 1803. And you're like, well, that's not a big uh, a big difference. Well, it it does make a difference over time. Mm-hmm. So I would say if you it don't don't spend much time with trading, especially, you know, I was I was talking with a guy yesterday and he'd spent all day watching this trade that he had in the TQQQ or SQQQ, I don't even remember. I think he was short and the market was going down. And so he was all excited about 
he and I'm like, well, how much did you make? And he's like, ten bucks. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you were distracted all day and gave less than your best to your employer all day to make ten bucks. Are you kidding me? So I would just say, be really, really careful what you give your mind to and have done with lesser things. Uh, that is good wisdom right there. Uh, you know, I'm generally a fan of tools or systems or approaches to investing that help you grow in your own investment savvy. And trading is not not that. Mm -hmm. Speculating in certain individual stocks is not that. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I think about all of the appointments that our financial advisors are having with clients right now and through some of the, the choppy markets that we've been enduring this year. And there is an educational component to every single meeting that they're having. Mm -hmm. And that's important because even, even if our clients are delegating the responsibility of managing their investments, they're not completely abandoning um, the, the topic altogether. They're learning along the way. And a lot of that is just learning how to manage your own emotions with your investments. And sometimes you really can't even practice that unless we do go through some ups and downs in the market, different market cycles. And having someone there to help you along the way is what Robin Hood lacks. Yeah. Right? Right. Uh, let's get into another one real quick. Christine from YouTube channel said, we opened a custodial Roth IRA account for our daughter. She contributed two grand and we matched 50%, uh, 1,000. My first response, Christine, is are you adopting? Um, <laughs> I'm filing her taxes and her income wasn't high enough to report. How do I report the contributions to the Roth IRA? Do I even need to? Well, you shouldn't need to. You do need to make sure that your daughter made more, made enough to cover all the contributions that went that went into her her Roth IRA. So if she put in two and you matched a thousand, that's three grand went into the Roth, she needed to make at least three grand. And if that's such that she doesn't need to file, no problem. The IRS is getting a copy of her W-2 as well. And they're also getting a copy of the 5498. Kevin, you're saying she does? Or what I'm, I'm going to say, Christine, if she... So in this case, we're assuming she made three grand. I would assume that there were withholdings that your daughter would like to get back. And the only way to get those withholdings back is to file. Yeah, that, that we see that a lot for kids of clients where technically they don't make enough, they don't need to file a return, but they've got some tax withholdings that they can get back. And so hopefully, hopefully that helps. Fantastic that you opened the Roth and got that habit started for her and that you're matching. Love that encouragement. That's going to pay off significantly over the long term. So thanks for the question. That's all the time we have for today on behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at Corhorn Financial Group. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.